Welcome to Rutland Manor and grooming your Labradoodle. This video was filmed at Rutland Manor, located on 150 acres of the beautiful Gippsland region of Victoria, Australia. It is the first in a series that guides you through the grooming and care of your Labradoodle. The model for this demonstration is Rutland's Clementine, an apricot fleece coated female Labradoodle. Clemmy, as she is affectionately known, lives a life of luxury at Rutland Manor as one of Beverly's treasured house dogs. In this video, Beverly will present the tips and tricks step by step, which will help you keep your own doodle looking beautiful and feeling comfortable every day of the year. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoy the presentation. Firstly, we're going to take a look at some handy little grooming tools. This is a pair of scissors that we call shears because they have a wider blade. On the end, they have nice little finger guards. Here's another pair of scissors that are curved. These are very useful for clipping the hair on places that you, you, you want to be very careful not to cut your dog, like around the eyes or ears. This is a handy little comb. It's made of steel and as you can see, one end, the um, teeth are wide apart and the other end, they're closer together. So that's a very handy little comb in one piece. These are pluckers, tweezers, and it's to pull the hair out from inside of the dog's ears. And believe it or not, it doesn't hurt them. Next, we have a really handy little tool called the mat breaker. Now, you might be able to see the little curved teeth on this, this tool. They're quite sharp, and it's a handy tool because it can be changed to suit a right-handed person or a left-handed person. It's called a mat breaker. Next we have the slicker brush. Now slicker brushes are not all made equal. This one is a very special slicker brush. As you can see, the bed that the, the uh, bristles are set in is soft and it's flexible. And this makes an enormous difference when you're grooming a sensitive skinned dog. You can run this brush over your own hands or you can even run it across your cheek and it won't hurt you, and it doesn't hurt your dog either. The next one is just a smaller version of the same kind of slicker brush, and as you can see, again, it has the nice flexible bed that the bristles are growing out of. Highly recommended slicker brush. Our model today is Clementine. Say hello, Clementine. <laughs> there she is. Okay, now it's very hard to demonstrate how to groom a dog with mats if the dog hasn't got mats. So we have let Clementine's coat um, deteriorate just so that we can show you how to fix it. I'm going to show you a few mats here in a moment, but first I want to point something out that's very important. And that is that you need to put your dog up on a high surface, on a counter or on a bench or on a grooming table if you're lucky enough to have one but it is so important to put your dog up high. If you look at Clementine now, you really wouldn't know how badly matted she was from the outside. And so many owners get such a shock when they part the coat one day 
and oh my goodness, they see all these mats underneath. And from looking from the outside, you wouldn't have known it. Look at this, an absolute network. Mats start by two hairs sticking together. Two hairs become 10, 20, 50, and so on. And then eventually each mat joins up with another mat until they form big thick wads that sort of hang down in layers. See, there's where it's just starting to all join together and it's not quite a layer yet. And you can just see as we part the coat that it does come into these big thick heavy clods. Now I'm going to lay Clementine down and I'm doing it back to front so you can see what I'm doing. You would turn the dog the other way around. But the trick is to take the underneath leg and pull it forwards. So, and then using your own body or your arm or elbow, you lay the dog's head down and soothe her, reassure her, tell her sweet nothings until she relaxes. See, so using the body and now reassure. First place a dog generally mats is on the insides of the legs. And he will have a look underneath her legs look what we see mats everywhere now I'm going to give you a very handy little tip that you may not have heard before and that is to use body powder there we go we just sprinkle a little bit in very close to the roots and work it through with the fingers moisture is what causes hairs to stick together now what the powder does is it dries it out and makes it much easier for the brush to fluff it out See how quickly this is already starting to fluff out. Now without the powder, it wouldn't happen that quickly. Notice the firm strokes with the brush and how I'm protecting this little tender piece behind the paw, the pads. Every dog has that tender little spot. And the reason that most dogs hate their legs being brushed is because people aren't aware of that little spot and they don't protect it. So you can see I'm holding it firmly with one hand. Now notice that the top hand is holding the coat very firmly and the brush is literally pulling down a few hairs at a time. Now we're going to go up in the opposite direction and we can even brush across sideways, up, down, across, whatever, anything to break up those mats. Now she wants to get up so underneath leg comes forward and you use your own body to put her back down on the table. There we go. Now if she tried harder to get up, you would also pull the, un the, the back leg from underneath as well. Now how are we going with these mats? There's a few more left in there. Now notice I'm using the corner of the brush and I'm digging it in quite hard. It's a very, very handy little tip. If you're not making progress, you just dig that corner of the brush in and really tug at it. Now you can see that Clementine is not moving. She's relaxed, she's smiling there, and she's perfectly happy. If I was brushing gently over the top of her coat, it would probably pull and she wouldn't like it. But I'm putting quite a bit of pressure there most of the time, and she's, she's much more comfortable that way. It's like bathing a baby. You handle them firmly and then that gives them confidence. Now how are we going? That's looking a lot better already. Still a few crossovers there. But looking good. Now we're going to groom the hind leg. And uh, you'll see there's some pretty bad mats on that haunch. I'll open them up in a minute and show you. Have a look at that. Now, a lot of groomers would take one look at that and say, I'm sorry, it can't be saved, and they'd shave her off like a rabbit. I'm here to share with you that it can be saved. And this is how we do it. The powder rub the powder through and then once again we hold now bottom leg underneath leg lay her down reassure her relax her 
tell her she's a good girl. And then we start again. Once again, you see I'm pulling up the hair so that I can drag it down layer by layer from underneath my other hand. And that way, you know, you get right down to the very roots of the coat. There we go. Now there's a mat there. Dig in that corner of the brush and really pull at it. Firm strokes. Upwards, across, down. I call this divide and conquer. If you divide the mats up, you'll conquer them. Yeah, it's like magic, isn't it? So easy once you know how. Up, across, down, any which way you like. To divide those mats, you'll conquer them. And as you can see, Clementine is perfectly relaxed. Your fingers are what will show you where you need to go. By running your fingers through the coat, you identify where the mats are. Now I'm going to come in with the mat breaker here and you'll notice how it actually strips out the fluffy bits that are holding the mats together. Can you see it flying? Look at that. You'd never get that out with a brush or the comb. But all those little curved um, blades, they divide and conquer with every stroke. Look at that. There you go. Oh, you are such a good girl, Clementine. What a good girl. Once again, notice that there's quite a bit of pressure being used. This is not the time to be gentle. Now we're going to use the shears and notice that I'm sliding the, the shears along parallel to her body. You make a place, a spot to enter and then you just snip it along. Because you're doing it parallel, you won't cut your dog. And provided you cut in the direction that the hair grows, you won't see where you have cut. There will be no holes in her coat. She won't look like um, she's a chewed rug or something. Um, and, you know, to see this getting cut like this, you think, oh my goodness, she's going to have holes everywhere. She's going to look terrible. But she won't. Never ever cut across the mat. You always cut down through the mat in the direction that the hair grows. Now it's been loosened up by cutting and now the back breaker is stripping out all that dead coat that's causing the matting. Now if this was hurting, she would be trying to sit up and she'd be getting quite upset about it. So. Be confident, use good firm strokes and you'll find that the dog won't mind. They really don't like you to fiddle around and try to be soft and gentle because that's when it does pull. Here we go again, downwards, across, up, every which direction. And we're getting all this coat out on the brush because we have divided the mats by cutting them. Clementine is a completely non-shedding dog. So you would not get a hair out of her unless you actually cut it. Notice the top hand holding the, the coat so that you can brush down layer by layer. Here we go with the big shears again. And those little grips for your thumb and finger, oh, they are such a blessing. 
here we go. Now that's pretty bold cutting and you'd think, oh, it's bound to leave holes in the coat, but it doesn't. As long as you cut in the direction that the hair grows and lengthways through the mat, there will be no holes in her coat. And see, keeping the scissors parallel, not pointing them at the dog, but keeping them parallel ensures that you're not going to accidentally cut the dog's skin. Always cut the way the hair grows. Now, this is possibly a good time to mention that we never ever bath a dog before brushing if there are any mats. Water will set the mats as hard as concrete. Now, underneath leg, Lay her down, use your arm and your own body. And she settled down so quickly this time. There, now I can run my fingers right through. The mats are gone. And there's no holes. It's magic, isn't it? There we go. You can see how it's thinned out because I've removed so much matted hair, but there's no holes in her coat. Look at that. Oh, you're such a good girl, Clemmy. Such a good girl. I've got treats for you later. Now let's take a look under her ears. Matted, grubby, Look at those mats. Because of the matted hair and the dirt that, that sticks to matted hair, it also means that the ears are going to overheat. The dog is going to be liable to get yeast infections and, um, and get smelly ears. So it's very important to keep the area clean under the ears, behind the ears and under the jaw because now once again notice how the scissors are not pointing inwards they are parallel to the dog I've got my fingers protecting the bulb of her ear so if I cut anything accidentally that I shouldn't I'll cut my own fingers but I won't cut her sensitive ear now I'm making a channel which goes from underneath the ear all the way down under her throat and up to the other ear I see how I'm protecting her ear so that I can't accidentally cut it. Her ear is held up underneath my hand and my hand is protecting the bulb of her ear. Now this can, I'm using the scissors to show you that it can be done with scissors but if you do have a pair of clippers it is much easier and I'll just finish her off with the clippers in a moment. Once again protect her ear Feel the hair, make sure you know where the skin finishes and the mat starts and then I'm protecting her by holding her skin in my fingers. Look how trusting she is. Hold the ear firmly in the other hand, protect the ear with that same hand and then we're going to use the clippers to finish her off. Now if your dog has never been clipped before, it's a good idea to turn this on and just run the back of them over your own arm or hand and just show your dog that you're not afraid of the clippers and the noise they make and that will give your dog confidence that if it's not hurting you, it's not going to hurt your dog. There we go, we're cleaning all that hair out from around the base of her ear. And by doing this, when she runs and her ears flap, you see that little channel that I'm creating there? That will make air flow and there'll be a cooling sensation going into her ears.
Now some dogs have very thick hair underneath the leather of their ear and it's quite, you know, quite admissible, uh, permissible rather, to clip the inside of the ear to remove some of that hair as well. Now we're going to do underneath her jaw. See how that channel is going to come all the way across under her throat. There we go. That's the part that so often gets matted. You know, they, they put their face. Look at it. Look at those teeth. Now, this dog has never, ever, sorry, Clementine. <laughs> this dog has never, ever had her teeth cleaned. She's two and a half years old, but she gets plenty of raw, meaty bones. And her teeth are snow white like all our dogs. Okay, now here we go. See that channel? You'd think, oh my gosh, that's going to look terrible. But you won't even see it once I'm finished. Okay, now we're going to do the other ear exactly the same way as we did the first one. Hold the ear across, place the flat of your hand over the bulb of her ear and protect it while you clip the hair away. There we go. My, you do look funny, Clementine. I mean, with all that shaggy hair. <laughs> look at that beard. I'll show you what to do with the beard in a moment. The beards are really cute, and I think it would be an awful shame to cut them right off because they do look so cute. But we can trim it so that they still look like the shaggy dog, but they don't get their food and water and mud and everything else all stuck around their faces. We'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, see how that's cooling? That's the air to it all the way under, from one ear up to the other ear. I'm just clean this little bit up here. But the scissors always parallel to the dog's body. Now those mats I actually snipped across ways because I want it close to the skin anyway. I'm not trying to prevent a hole in the coat like I was on the body. Once again, nice firm strokes. They don't mind, in fact they prefer it. Don't forget to brush underneath the ear as well. And please don't chop the ends of their ears off. And the beautiful long ears are so pretty. Now when we trim the hair on the cheeks and around the jaw, we're aiming for a round look. See that's all hanging down like a, look, see a nice round look like a daisy we want. So we just take those long heavy bits off from underneath to create the round look and the neater look but still looking like a shaggy dog. I'm going to use the curved scissors only because I personally prefer them for this part of the job. It helps me to cut in a circle. You may find that it's more comfortable for you to use the big ones. See how we're turning it into a circle? 
shortening it, but it's not taking away the beauty of their face and their head. Now the one thing I would caution you about is when you're snipping around this area, just watch that your dog doesn't poke its tongue out just as the scissors come underneath it. Sometimes you may feel more comfortable actually holding their muzzle shut while you're clipping underneath their chin. With practice you'll, you'll, you'll get a feeling for it and you'll know when they're going to do it and when they're not. But when you're still learning it's a good idea to really hold the muzzle shut so that their tongue doesn't poke out when you least expect it to. Now we've got our circle, I'm going to join up that channel that we did from one ear to the other with another little channel in a straight line all the way up the middle of her jaw. Once again, you could use clippers, but I'm just showing you that it can be done with scissors. I think it's much harder with scissors, but it can be done. Now what this is going to do is, once again, allow that airflow to go underneath her and up to her ears. And it's also going to create a pathway that helps prevent um, preventing her from picking up dirt, mud, um, leftovers of her dinner, grease, water out of the water bowl, all those sorts of things. Now this is where the comb comes in handy and I'm using the wide set part of the, um, of the teeth. Now if I was grooming a miniature I would probably use the fine side of the comb. Now, this is where we give the, the face its expression and keep the hair out of the eyes. Level with the inside corner of the eyes, you just clip straight across. See how it, straight away it gives her a profile and gives her head some shape. I'll finish doing that in a moment. I do tend to swap from one spot to another when I'm grooming a dog and it's become a habit over the years. I mainly started doing that sort of thing because if a dog was getting tired of me working on one spot, then I'd just work on another spot for a little while. Now I find I sort of jump from one bit to another and it's just quite automatic. Now you can see the trimming of the, of the top hair. It's just like the hairdresser does when you go in yourself. You, know, you just put the, comb the hair up between the fingers and then snip off a little bit however much you want to that's outside your fingers. Finish rounding off our beard. Now the last little bit to do on the face, you see how that the hair is very, very long on the tip of her muzzle. Now that's what gets the food caught in it and, and um, gets matted and horrible and smelly. So see how the scissors were angled up towards her nose. Watch the angle of the scissors. We'll come down from the top this side because I'm right handed. But can you see how it, it shortens the hairs that are very close to her nose and then they get longer as they go further down her cheeks. And that makes quite a difference to them when they're eating and drinking. They just don't gather as much around their mouths. Now I'm doing a light misting of water to help settle the coat. And you can do that all over the whole body because when you brush, they come out looking like a, a fluffy pompadour. See how that's getting all the little spirals back in already. And when it dries, it'll be lovely. You have a shiny nose, Clemmy. Now, doing the feet. Now, Clementine actually did have her feet shortened um, a few months ago, so the hair isn't as 
big and huge on the feet as, as it could be. Notice once again, my fingers are protecting that little tender spot underneath and my thumb is holding up the coat so that the brush can drag a few hairs down at a time. Just the same as we did on the other side. Brush up, across, protecting that little tender piece all the time. Now holding the coat out of the road in one hand, if your dog has the really big shaggy gum boots on, um, you would just do this exactly the same way. It's just that Clemmy's feet were already a little bit shorter. Now she knows that I'm not going to hurt her little tender spot, so she's perfectly relaxed and she's trusting. I like to leave a few hairs in between the pads because um, I just think it gives them a little bit more protection. Now clean out in behind the heels there because that's a spot that picks up a lot of debris, brings snow and mud into the house, dust and dirt and leaves and all that sort of thing into your house. There's a little mat starting there already. See now when the hair is brushed down, you don't see all that stuff that you cut away. Not like the poodle who has its ankles clipped right up a fair way up the leg. We just take enough from the foot and around the back of the heel so that the dog's foot is, is kept clean and neat and it doesn't bring all the mess inside your house. I told you you were going to get a treat later. You're such a good girl. This is cheese in case you were wondering what I was giving her. Okay, now see how the top hair is covering up the spot that I cut so short? You just never know, would you? I just like to trim it a little bit around the base just to neaten it a little bit. There we go. Nice and round. You see, once, once your dog trusts you up on the table, you can do anything. Mm, she loves her treats. Now the tail. The tail is another place that most dogs hate having brushed because it's not done in a way that is comfortable. Now all these big heavy mats and things, they need to be brushed out really firmly, just like we did before. But we need to help the dog feel comfortable by holding its tail bone very firmly in one hand. Once again, we'll go for the powder to make it easier and quicker. Just work it gently in with your fingers. Get it in as deep as you can, as close to the skin as you can. Now you wouldn't just start brushing away there or that would pull and dog would hate it. So I'm taking a firm grasp of the tailbone. And she's not even moving because it's not hurting. Notice that firm grasp. So I'm actually brushing the hairs out from under my own hand and she's not getting the pressure against her tender skin. Now we go into the other side exactly the same way. Never brush the underneath side of your dog's tail. It's very sensitive and they hate it. You can get to every part of your dog's tail by coming at it from each side. Do one side, then do the other. If you brush from the underneath, they absolutely hate it. Next time they see you coming with a brush, it's like, I'm out of here.
Now you can see quite clearly those little curved teeth in the mat breaker. Actually, the one I'm using in this presentation is not quite as sharp as it could be. It's, uh, it's done quite a few dogs, but you can see it's doing a great job still dragging out those mats. Little short tugging motion, not a long sweeping motion. It's a little short tugging motion. You see that? And the fur is flying. Once again, your fingers will show you where you still need to work. I've decided that it's going to be too much work with the mat breaker and it's much easier to divide and conquer. Grab the shears, remembering to cut in the direction that the hair grows and to have your scissors parallel to your dog's body. Find yourself a little starting place and then slide the scissors through. Now it's coming out. Divide and conquer. When your young dog is changing from its puppy coat to its adult coat, you may need to go through this whole procedure twice over the period of a couple of months. But if it's done properly, it lasts for months. You don't need to go to all this trouble every week or every two weeks or every three weeks. That was just a totally matted area just a few moments ago. Time for another treat. Oh yes, Mom. Now I'm going to show you how to hold the hind leg. If you put your arm underneath the dog's body and then lift up the leg from the opposite side, cradle the foot in your hand, she can't sit down. And if she goes to jump off the table, she can't do that either. I'll show you that again in a moment. Arm underneath, slide your hand down, cradle the foot, pick it up. You'll be surprised how easy that is, even if you've never done it before with your dog. It gives them confidence, and they don't tend to fight you and want to get their leg away. I've never used a grooming harness in my entire life. The dogs will stand there for you if you know how to handle them. Now a little bit of neatening up. This is just the fine tuning.
I think this is a leftover from my poodle clipping years. It's probably not all that necessary, it's just something that I like to do. Just checking over the body, see if we've missed any, any matted areas. Remember to always talk to your dog. If you're turning him or her around, you want them to lay down, stand up, sit up, sit down. Talk to them. Let them know what you want. They're only too happy to cooperate if they understand what you want. Now it's really hard to remember how badly matted she was, isn't it? A light misting of water helps the staples and crinkles come back into the coat. Helps settle it down, get rid of that fluffy look. Or on a hot day you could just sprinkle a dog with a hose and let them drip dry. we're all finished. Now wasn't that easy? I do hope you try it for yourselves because it's fun, it's a bonding time between you and your dog, they love it and it's a lot cheaper too. And don't forget to have the treats handy, but I know you wouldn't forget that. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And give your doodle a kiss from Grandma Beverly. We hope you have enjoyed this first video in the series Caring for Your Labradoodle.